So let's see. Um, now for the final. Um, so the final is uh, Wednesday from 3 to 5. Um, so on this, what, what, what's going to happen here is you're going to have the stuff that's been covered since the last midterm. So basically, that's three things. We're doing this rigid body kinetics. So translation, fixed axis rotation, and general plane motion. Okay, Those are the things that we've been covering. So you want to be comfortable working with those. You want to be able to identify them for what they are and then kind of go through a solution process. So this translational stuff, it's like something moving across a surface and you either want to find reactions or look at tipping. The fixed axis rotation stuff, it's kind of what it says there. It's something rotating about an axis. You often need to find reactions and find alpha and do that kind of thing on that. General plane motion is just motion in space. We've had that stuff with the relative acceleration, and then we've also had rolling objects with that. So those are some of the topics there. And then also, you go back to midterm two, we're going to have uh, you put a work energy problem on there and some momentum. So, so that's kind of what's, what's coming up here. All right. So we got any questions for starters on that? So, the, like I say, the translation, you're finding uh, reactions or you're finding whether something will tip, fixed axis rotation, you're looking at alpha usually, you know, using some form of M equals IG alpha, and then you're looking at reactions and things, and then the general plane motion, again, relative acceleration or rolling objects. Okay, the work energy, uh, you know, you're looking at changes in elevation and springs, uh, maybe friction or something like that that causes work. Um, you know, that's, and you're looking at distances with work energy. With momentum, the important thing on that is treat it as a vector. Run an x equation, run a y equation. Okay. Um, all right, um, now let's see. I'd like you to um, turn in that uh, swinging door problem. You can do that with the final. Um, and I'll just kind of check you off on it. So I don't need you to um, to uh, dress it up or, you know, write it up in any sort of fancy way. Just turn in what you got and I'll just check it off and get you some points on it. That, that's about it, okay, on that. So, uh, you know. I just want to be sure you do that because it's a good review. Okay, here's another bit of a review. This is that problem we were working on Wednesday um, where we've got this uh, roller going down a ramp, 28 degree ramp, and we want to uh, find uh, basically the acceleration of the roller. This is problem uh, 350 something or another. Three fifty-two. All right. So what I've done with that is I've added a couple of things to what we had. I took the weight and I broke it up into components. So they're in purple. So there's eight point two nine parallel to the ramp, and then fifteen point five nine normal to the ramp. And um, all right. So if you see something like this, you know you'd want to generate this free body diagram, and I think I had you do that in class. All right, now you can either take a two equation approach to this or one big equation. So the two equations for objects that are rolling is what do we got here? We got sum of f equals ma, and then sum of ig is ig alpha, right? All right, and then if you're going to do one equation, it's sum of ma, and that's going to equal what? Ig alpha plus mag um, xy bar plus magy x bar. Okay. 
So those are the equations you can use, one or the other. You can use the two equations or the one. So, you know, whichever way suits you is generally okay. Um, why don't you do F equals MA and an MG equals IG alpha for that thing? Just real quick, see what you can do with that. So, you know, the first thing to do there is get a free body diagram going and then just sum up the forces. You know, some are known, some are not. And then equate that to MA. The mass is 1.8 kilograms. Take a couple minutes and see what you can do with that. And, and again, just look at the thing, and you know, you're gonna set it up. Uh, you know, your axes I'd set up like that, x prime and y prime, along the uh, ramp. And just some forces and some moments. So what we got for F equals MA, what's pushing it down the ramp? Yeah, the weight. And then what's resisting the motion? And, and then you got 1.8A. There you go. I mean, that's it. Okay. And then when you go sum of MG, you just think about what makes it roll. Okay. Um, the radius is 0.15, so 0.15 force of friction, okay? That's the moment. And that's about it. There's no other forces that uh, don't act through the center of gravity. And then you just equate that to the uh, 0 0.02025 times uh, alpha. I mean, that's basically it for this one. Okay. So, we all right with that? Yeah. Uh, what I did, the, the weight was shown on there. The weight was 17.66, and I just did the trigonometry on that, got the weight broken up into components parallel to the axis and perpendicular to it. 
So I just took the, the, the if you take the mass, you can convert that to the weight, 17.66, then you got a 28 degree ramp angle. So cosine 28 times 17.66 gets you the 15.59, and then sine 28 is the where the 8.29 comes from. Oh, okay. okay. All right, and you can work through that. See, what you know, you know that there's no slipping. So, you know, you're going to have, when you have no slipping, what that leads to is A equals R alpha. So A is 0.15 alpha. So alpha would be A over 0.15. So you could take that and plug it in there. And then you're just going to have two equations with two unknowns. And you can solve for A. Yeah. If it was slipping, um, would you... Uh, for uh, the f equals ma equation, and then like solve ff plus times. Yeah, if it is slipping, actually it's easier, you know, because yeah. you know what the friction is, and you just plug it in. You're going to have, uh, you know, if you just if you want to know the acceleration, and if if you know it is slipping, you would just find U F N, plug it in there, and then you'll get one unknown left in that equation to solve for it. That's all there's to it. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm a little confused as to why the 15, the 15.59 is in the Oh, because it's not, uh, the 15.59 is normal to the ramp. Okay. So what we're doing here, I, I didn't call out as such, but we're going sum of f yes. x prime. Oh, okay. You're just going down the ramp with our analysis. Okay. Kind of the vector thing. So it's, it's useless pretty much. I'm just, yeah. Now you need to use it if you check the, you know, the slipping and the friction and all that. Okay. Right. Other questions? You doing all right? all right, how about if you did this sum of MA is IG alpha routine here? Um, for to start with, where would you where would point A, where would you set point A at? If you're gonna do it this way. This is another way to solve this stuff. Um, it's the bottom, yeah, because what you want to do when you go sum of MA, you, you want to simplify what you're analyzing here. And the way to simplify it is to remove the friction. So you take A where you remove one of the unknowns that makes it hard. In this case, it would be right at the base of that roller. All right. So if you do that, what what's... What's causing the thing to roll when you take a moment about A? What's that? It's the alpha. What, what force makes it roll when you take the moment about A? Yeah, that right, there, right there. See, it's different now. Here we're looking at the friction causing the rolling motion. But when you take moments about A, it's that weight up top. Now we're calling clockwise positive because everything's going that way. So you'd have 8.29 newtons times 0.15 meters. Okay. So you'd start with that. Now you got IG alpha. See, that's what we just did. So that's 0 0.02025 times alpha. I mean, that's that's the same thing as you got right there. They're the same term, so they're the same thing. Okay. Now you don't have any y acceleration, so we're looking at y prime and x prime there. So you're just left with the mass times AGX, which will be an unknown times the distance from your point A to where that acts. That's called an inertial moment. So that's how you would finish this thing off. Okay, so 1.8 kilograms. The A is an unknown, that would be AGX. Y bar, what that is, is just like a moment arm. And uh, what that's doing is just going from A up to the center of gravity right there. So that's 0 0.15 is what that is, 0.15 meters. Like so, okay. Yeah. 
use an A bar alpha if it's if A bar alpha? This equation would work regardless. Yeah, the thing is, if it's slipping, alpha gets hard to figure out because you, uh, you know, you're, uh, it kind of depends what you want to know. But, you know, if it's slipping, this is gone now. You can't use that anymore because there's no relationship between A and alpha directly. So to get alpha then, that would become more difficult. Um, you know, you'd probably do this to find alpha once you knew what the friction was. I guess you could get alpha pretty quick because if you know what the friction is, you could plug it in there and solve for alpha, couldn't you? So that would work. Um, then you could take the known alpha and pop it in there. But, you know, so I guess it wouldn't be all that bad if you know it's slipping. But the norm, you know, slipping is actually a little bit unusual. Slipping just happens if you've got a real slippery surface normally if things are just rolling around and, and they just don't there's just not enough gr bite on the on the ground to get them to, you know they'll just start spinning like your tires spinning on the ice there's that other deal when you lock up your brakes you're slipping too that's a different style you're skidding then okay but the nor the normal motion for a thing that rolls is not slipping that's that's the norm okay all right All right, um, let's see. All right, I gave you some, did everybody get this uh, review, those review problems that I handed out? Anybody need to know? So I'll have this up in Moodle 2, this solution. But this is, this is uh, these problems I headed out, they're in Moodle 2. Um, they're just kind of generic problems from the different styles. Okay, so here we got a vehicle rolling. It's not uh, spinning or anything, so this would be translation. We want to find the maximum allowable acceleration before it tips. So what you do with this is you... Uh, found the weight okay so there's the weight right there um, then I just took moments about B here because it's accelerating to the left so remember when something tips it tips in the opposite direction of the acceleration so if this thing's going to tip it's going to come around that way okay so what's going to happen when it tips is RA goes to zero so to find out what the maximum acceleration can be before it tips, you're going to analyze for that moment just before it tips. So alpha is still zero, as is AGY. So you can solve for AGX right there. All right, so you just uh, work through this and you look at the forces that are involved. We got the wind there. So that's coming around. That's going to cause a moment like that which I call negative, and then you've got the weight coming down like that. As we go around B, that's going to be positive, okay, like so. So I'm taking moments about B because I'm assuming that RA is zero. By taking moments about B, I don't have to worry about the friction that's involved here, nor do I have to worry about the normal force at B. So I can just uh, account for the wind force and the weight in the moment equation. That's the forces and weights that goes on the left. And then I go MA, and then the moment arm is going to be that distance up from B up to that horizontal acceleration. See, what's happening there is that's accelerating this way. Um, okay, so that's a horizontal acceleration. I use a vertical moment arm perpendicular to the direction of acceleration and that'll come around clockwise so that's going to be um, or I'm sorry counterclockwise so that's going to be positive 
that I can solve for AX. Right? Any questions on that one? Okay. All right. Okay, this next one's a little bit involved. Um, obviously, this is a disc, a disc shown has a rectangular plate attached to it. The disc and plate rotate together, so the plate's attached to the disc. They rotate together about a fixed frictionless axle through the center of the disc. So that's fixed axis rotation. Find the reactions. Okay. So this kind of follows a, you know, a fairly typical pattern on this stuff. Find the moment of inertia. Now on this, you're going to have to do the two pieces. The disc is 1 half mr squared. The plate is 1 12th m a squared plus b squared. That's the moment of inertia of a rectangular plate plus the transfer axis term, md squared. So that's 0.272. Okay. So the total moment of inertia of that assembly about a is the sum of the two. And then what do we got? We've got the weight of the plate, 11.9 newtons there. I've got the weights over here. That's going to cause a cl uh, clockwise moment about a. You've got the weight of the plate times the distance that it is from the axle, clockwise. So I'm calling that positive. That's going to be the sum of the two i's times alpha. So I can get alpha 2.42. Okay. So the thing that's um, so the disc is centered about a. So we don't need to worry about it as far as causing accelerations. It's just rotating about a. But we do want to account for the plate. So the tangential acceleration of the plate, which would be down there as it rotates around A, is alpha R. The normal acceleration of the plate is omega squared R. So we found alpha, 2.42. We got omega at 4. So we can find those components of acceleration, 1.09 and 7.2. So that's what that plate, how the plate accelerates as it rotates around A. All right, once you got that, you just uh, do force equations. Sum of Fy is MAGY. So the forces in the y direction are RAY up, the two weights down. Okay. And that's going to equal the mass times A, now A is down, so that goes in as a negative acceleration. And then sum of Fx is MAGx, so I just called left positive there. So I got Rax is the mass times the normal acceleration. So we're good with that. That's the kind of a typical solution process for that. Find I, use I to get alpha. You might need to find omega or it might be given to you. Once you got alpha and omega, you can find the accelerations. In this case, it's just the plate because the center of gravity of the disk is right at A, so you don't have to worry about that. It's just the plate you're dealing with. And then you go sum of Fx and sum of Fy. And that's basically it. This one's obviously a little, a little busy here. Um, this is a spool. I'm gonna pull it to the right. So we got a, you know, a bunch of just uh, background information here. No slipping. So A is R alpha right there. You've got R. Now R would be the inner radius, not the, or excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't slip on the ground. Okay. Or, 
Yeah, this, the spool does not slip on the flat surface. There we go. That's given right there. So that will be um, A is R alpha, so R is 0.6. Okay, so that's the outer radius because you're given that it doesn't slip on the flat surface. So you can get that relationship set up. We can go sum of Fy equals 0, get the normal force. Total mass here and weight um, I've got. All right, now when you got a rolling thing like this, there's two approaches. You can go just like we were doing just a minute ago. Some of Fx is MAGx and some of Mg is Ig alpha. So what, 24 newtons pulling to the left, or right, I'm sorry, right, it's positive. Friction to the left, that'll be Ma. And then the moment about the center of gravity will be the uh, 0.6 times the force of friction, call in clockwise positive, minus the 24 times that inner radius of 0.2, because that'll come around like that. Get two equations and two unknowns, you can solve for the acceleration. Okay. Now the other way you can do it, you can uh, take a moment about the point where the friction is, that way you eliminate that unknown from the equation. So sum of MA there is IG alpha plus MAGXY bar plus MAGYX bar. So the moment in this case will be 24 newtons times this moment arm right here. That's the moment arm about A, that's 0.4 meters. It's clockwise, so we'll call that positive. Set that equal to IG alpha. We've got IG, we found that already somewhere right here. And then M, 2 kilograms, times the unknown A, times the 0.6 meter moment arm from the bottom up to that point A, right there, 0.6 meters. Okay. So you can do it either way. Get the same acceleration either way. Um, to check friction, you find what the friction is to kind of link A and alpha together by using uh, whichever one of these two top equations is easier. Looks like I went with this one. That's a pretty easy equation to use. Plug in the known A now of 6.49 into that. You get the uh, friction. It's 11. And then take mu Fn and make sure it's greater than the friction you need. So that's just a bit of a review on the stuff we've been covering here for the last two couple weeks or so, two, three weeks. So, you know, that's a pretty good review for what a lot of the final will look like. There will also be some uh, uh, work energy and momentum, kind of the stuff from, from the second midterm. You got any questions on that? Yeah. Question. Um, going back to the cart, tipping cart one, the, uh, well, the one you just told me, the one you just told me, I don't know if I'll pull it up first one. So, yeah, we got a question on the first one. We can roll this up. Here we go. So this is this one here. Okay. Um, the uh, MAGY X bar is zero. Right. Why is that again? Okay. Yeah, this stuff. Um, um, so th what's going on here is you're, you, you're given that this thing's moving on a horizontal surface. Um, now you want to find how much it can accelerate before it tips. The key thing on that is before it tips. So you're finding that threshold between tipping and not tipping. So the threshold between tipping and not tipping is when RA is zero, but it's not yet started to tip. So the idea is if you find the acceleration and for which RA is zero, if you go one millionth more of a meter per second squared, it will then tip. That's kind of the idea. Okay. Um, so if it, so, but it's not yet tipping. So if it's not yet tipping, G is just accelerating horizontally. 
It's not accelerating up or down. So that's why AG is zero. Now, once it starts to tip, you know, this all gets thro thrown off because alpha won't be zero. And if it tips like that, that G will start to come off the ground and it will have a Y acceleration. But we're assuming it's just not yet there. It's just about to get there, but it's not there yet. So I guess another question I have is, what is the subscript G X through like G Y? Um, G means center of gravity. Okay. And I just use a lowercase because I can't write an uppercase very well. Yeah. So, so G just means center of gravity. Okay. And then uh, X and Y just refer to the direction. And you know, and everything goes through the center of gravity on this stuff when you're analyzing it. That's the norm. Okay. Other questions? Um, oh, because because it's not tipping. It, what's that? Right. Yeah, and it's just it's just the method for doing this. You kind of, you know, you're, you're picking that very instant. So that's the thing you're looking at, that zero reaction. That's what happens just before it tips. And I've you know I've felt that on skis doing a corner where that that one inside ski starts getting really light and it starts to kind of pull up off the off the snow and you know you might be in a bit of trouble when you're doing that just maybe okay. or a motorcycle if that front tire starts getting really light you kind of feel it kind of floating you know that's that's when things might start getting a little exciting there. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. So just momentum and work energy between all of them. Yeah, right. And I, yeah, it's not wide open. So it's going to be a momentum problem and then a work energy problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then and then this stuff. These three kind of problems here. So you know, kind of get and. You know, very frankly on this stuff, you want to identify what kind of problem it is. The, where I start studying is a little bit bigger picture. What kind of problem is it? How, what's the general approach I make to that? If you can do that, you can make some errors in working through the problems. And, you know, of course, I'll take a few points off here and there. But that's, that's okay. All right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The thing to avoid is you've got to approach these in the right way. That's the thing. You can make errors on, on how you, the work you do. But if you don't, if you want to approach these the right way, that way you get a lot of the points, and that's what you want to do. All right. So be sure you can recognize a problem and then have a systematic approach to solving it, regardless of what that problem is. Okay.